Let me very quickly introduce you to different opportunities of chemical recycling and different methodologies. Important is that we find additional opportunities to get access to raw materials which we have taken from Mother Earth and that we use them as effective and efficient as possible. That is where chemical recycling can be one additional key. So what methodologies do we have? One example is you use Mother Nature. That is called enzymatic recycling. Let me just very briefly explain you how it works. If you have a polymer, that's what plastics are from a technical perspective, it's different building blocks that you have. And those different building blocks holding hands more or less forever. That's why plastics are so durable. However, you can now use them in a way that they keep holding hands or that you say, well, why don't you just for a second stop holding hands and separate again? And that is what chemical recycling does. And enzymatic recycling does that in a very precise way. That means you use little organisms or parts of little organisms, enzymes, and they exactly cut those hand-holding molecules at a position where they form the polymer. The good thing about this process is it is very selective. That means you get very high yields and you have very little side products, which is from an energy perspective, but also from a research perspective, a brilliant solution. The disadvantage is those recycling methodologies today are just at a very, very infant stage. We have first successful trials. However, we don't have large scale operations and that's why we still need more time, the right framework, the right research, but also the right partners to make sure that this methodology is moving forward. We have strong collaborations, particularly with academic research. And that is exactly where we want to push forward to make sure that that methodology is established as quickly as possible at scale. The next topic is thermal degradation. This has been referred to in one of the previous panels to pyrolysis. That is a well-established process. It comes with a lot of advantages because it is established, it is at industrial scale, it also has shown and proven to really improve the environmental footprint and it also has shown that it is from an energetic perspective much better than many other processes that you could take in addition and it keeps away plastics or other municipal waste getting into the environment. However, there is still development opportunities and those development opportunities is to do it at much lower temperatures. Because what you do to those hand-holding molecules, you take a hammer and you crush the molecules and that means you just get a very, very large range of more or less uncontrolled spectrum of molecules. So this is not the most sophisticated way. However, it works for some areas and it works particularly for waste that is of mixed nature and that for good or for bad reason has not been sorted well enough to go into one or the other processes. That is also basically the thing that is the closest to today's petrochemical processes and approaches. You have a lower selectivity, but you get access to the carbon that you already have extracted out of the ground or from other sources. That means you keep carbon in loop, so it is recycling. What we are working on with partners is to lower the temperature, so less energy intake, and there is still huge room for improvement to increase the selectivity to get a higher range of the desired molecules that you want to have. And now we're coming to what some people normally refer to when they talk about chemical recycling. It is just one subcategory. So the third methodology is chemical depolymerization. What does that mean? You don't take an enzyme to make molecules stop holding hands, but what you do is you use other molecules or so-called catalysts which have the ability to say at this uh, particular um, point of the polymer chain, I want you dear molecules to stop holding hands. And that works today already. We have defined a process for so-called soft foam molecules. Every seat that you're currently sitting on contains exactly the molecules that I'm talking about. These soft foam molecules can be motivated to stop holding hands by a chemical process. And that's what we have meanwhile in lab scale and we're just about to invest into a pilot plan so that we can very quickly scale it up. That is just a small overview about how Covestro is currently working, where the different stages are in terms of chemical recycling and why I believe that the chemical industry is starting to work on eye level with the entire value chain because we have to close the loops, because we have to make sure that we use our once extracted molecules from Mother Earth as effectively and efficient as possible.